loudspeakers, loud speakers, speakers, everybody knows, I think you have speakers at home. How do those speakers uh, operate that I will, I will talk about shortly? Okay, first you have to talk a microphone. While we are talking a microphone, microphone records your sound, converts your sound to electric current, which is called electric signal. So a sound wave is converted, and while you're talking, uh, to a very electric signal. Very means changing, I mean the alternating, in alternating current. Electric signal by the microphone. Yeah, one, if you shout, you produce a signal with a greater amplitude. If you whisper, you produce a signal with smaller amplitude. Frequency of your sound also determines the frequency of the signal. Yeah, when you are talking, maybe you saw that in some uh, movies, as people are speaking, so there's something that's vibrating after it like this. These are called signals. You can change according to your, I mean, the talk. So amplitude changes, frequency changes, while you're while you're talking. This is called a signal. Yeah, when you convert your sound to electric electricity, that is called a signal, electric signal. This signal is uh, produced by a microphone. Microphone is doing that. Yeah, sometimes Mr. Nazim talking to microphone. So, so he's converting his sound to electric signal. But a microphone cannot produce a very powerful signal. It uses only small battery inside. Maybe 12 volt, maybe 9 volt, maybe 6 volt. So when a sound signal is produced, signal is produced by a microphone, it's not powerful. If you send this signal directly to a loudspeaker, you hear a very faint sound. That's why uh, the power of this signal must be increased. This electric signal amplified. Amplified means increasing the amplitude of the signal. Amplified means Increasing amplitude. Increasing amplitude. So, if the amplitude of a signal or a wave increases, its power increases. Remember, in chapter 3, we talked about this. Energy and power of a wave is proportional to square of the amplitude. And if the amplitude increases, power and energy of the signal also increases. So, we first Increase the power of the signal just like this. Yeah, I mean, that is the signal produced by a uh, wave. Later, you go amplified. Only thing you did is to increase amplitude, something like this. You got it. Same signal, but this time it is amplitude becomes much greater. Yeah, such things happen. You are increasing its amplitude. Amplified means this. So, and after that, send it to the loudspeaker. This signal made powerful, how do we do that? You plug it to the electricity and you increase its uh, power. Then send it to the loudspeaker. A loudspeaker has two basic components. First component is a magnet. Here is a permanent magnet. Second component is a coil. Inside this magnetic field there is a coil. Third one is a paper cone. This is a paper cone attached to this um, coil. When this electric current is sent to the coil, the coil starts vibrating because it produces magnetic field. If there are two magnetic fields, yes, there are. One magnetic field is magnet's magnetic field. Second magnetic field, coil's magnetic field. Two magnetic fields can be in the same direction. In the opposite direction, depending on the direction of the electric current of the signal. Say that when electric current is positive, this coil is pushed forward. When it's negative, backward, pulled backward. Depending on the direction of the electric current, it can be pushed forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. So it starts vibrating. As coil is vibrating, paper coil is attached to the coil, also it vibrates. So, sound, how do you produce sound? Vibration of the air molecules. When you are talking, your vocal cords are vibrating. 
So those vibration is transmitted to the air, molecules of the air vibrates, and we produce a sound. So in here, paper coil is vibrating because coil is vibrating. In here, vocal cords are vibrating. So we produce this way sound. So this very electric signal causes a very magnetic force on the coil and causes the coil to vibrate back, forth, back, forth, and so on. This alternating force on the coil results in vibrations. A test cone. Cone starts vibrating, which produces variations of the density of the air in front of it, remember? As the sound travels, there are regions of high density, which is called compression, low density, which is called rarefaction. So paper cone does this. As paper cone is vibrating, compressions, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. So sound is produced by this way. This is how an old speaker makes a sound. Now we are going to see a short movie in here about loudspeakers. Let's watch it. Speakers are designed to convert electrical energy to sound energy. Sound is produced when a vibrating object creates sound waves in air. Speakers have a fabric cone and membrane that vibrates, creating sound waves. This cannon is not creating visible vibrations, but I can feel the vibration with my fingers. If we play some intense percussion, vibrations become visible in the bass speaker. The force producing the vibrations is created by interacting magnetic fields. When electricity flows in a coil of wire, a magnetic field is created. This field reacts with the field of a permanent magnet. So two fields, coils field and permanent magnet fields interact. So then coil starts vibrating, moving forward and backward. A speaker typically has a powerful permanent magnet mounted on the back. Inside the speaker, an electromagnetic coil is suspended inside the permanent magnet. Removing the cone on this small speaker allows us to lift out the coil. Now see that. It's very thin. The coil is wound from very thin enamel-coated magnet wire. In this animation, the coil fits in the center of a permanent magnet. Coil inside. The cone is connected to the coil. When electric current from an amplifier starts pulsing through the coil, a varying magnetic field is created, pushing and pulling, moving the coil and cone, creating sound. The electric current varies in intensity and frequency at the same tempo as the music being played. Speaker. It is possible to build a simple demonstration speaker. I used four meters of 28. You need a magnet, a coil, and cup. Yes? Gauge magnet wire, a plastic cup, and a disc magnet. Connecting our simple demo speaker, now see. we have a significant drop in volume. Do you see that sound coming? Yes. We have faint sound, but still there is a sound. Music is there. Moving the mic closer confirms this. The quality is poor, but the music is recognizable. Most speakers are designed using this basic technology. Do not 